With the last episode of the Acolyte ending on a cliffhanger before the big battle, the obvious question is, how good was the battle? The answer is, it's okay. Some things were great, like the lighting and sound effects were all top notch. I have to say that I hate the yellow lightsabers. They make everything look sickly and remind me of urine. When the scene had red, blue or green sabers, it looked awesome. There were some odd things about the battle, such as people disappearing and then reappearing somewhere else when they should have been helping out their fellow Jedi. A new weapon is introduced out of nowhere that makes absolutely zero sense unless you've read the extended universe religiously. Otherwise, you think you must have been seeing things, or did that guy just deliberately headbutt a lightsaber and survive? Force powers are either too overpowered or not used at all. But I'm saying too much before we get into spoilers. Unfortunately, half of the fight was good the other half was stupid, and the surrounding story was criminally moronic. Episode 5 of The Acolyte is better than previous episodes, but it's still let down by stupid writing, so I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. And that's being generous. In fact, I'm kind of hamstrung by the fact I scored out of 10. It would probably be a 45 out of 100. Anyway, into the spoiler discussion. Osha's waking up after being tossed aside by Darth Moore, who is now labelled The Stranger in the subtitles. Osha falls into the orange dust, just like her sister did. Is that some kind of hallucinogen or just dust? It would be cool if it was used to explain some of the time discrepancies these episodes have, like it's getting her high and she's losing track of time. One nameless Jedi has already been killed. Who really cares? The Stranger is now taking on seven Jedi at once. And as with all terrible choreography, once a combatant is out of frame, they cannot interact with the remaining fighters. If one of these Jedi had a blaster, they'd be able to shoot Darth Maul in the back. Plo Kloon is dead! Oh wait, sorry, that was Jedi number one. So the Stranger has a helmet and a wristband that when it interacts with a lightsaber, it disables the blade, causing it to fizzle out for a few seconds. This changes everything. Why doesn't everyone have this stuff? Why not make a stick of it that you can wave through the lightsabers to disable them and then cave the Jedi's head in? Yord has to 1v1 the stranger long enough that he gets his leg cut, but not long enough that he can be finished off because the other Jedi's sabers come back to life. The stranger does a cool move of thrusting his saber through the abdomen of one Jedi and then force pulling a second Jedi onto his extended saber. It's a cool move, but begs the question of why doesn't he do this all the time? He then beheads the pair of them, but of course, Disney is too kid friendly to show an actual decapitation, so the camera moves so that a tree blocks part of the shot. Weak. Darth Maul is just about to finish off an incapacitated Yord when Osha hits him with a stun gun. The same one Yord wanted to take away from her. But the stun effect just bounces off him with barely any influence. Okay, is he immune? Is it his cloak? Is it the helmet? It's not explained. Yord tells Osha to run and for some reason the stranger leaves Yord alive and starts after her. At least finish the kill you had already set up. May's watching all of this and grabs Kalnaka's saber. The stranger has now shut off his saber so he can do a cool surprise attack from the shadows, but his throwing stick stunt boomerangs on him as Sol appears from out of nowhere to deflect it. Where the hell have you been, Sol? While the rest of your crew were getting slaughtered, you and Jackie were hiding in the bushes. Why weren't you in the fight? You had nothing else to do. The boomeranging lightsaber also cuts three trees, which are cut on a 45 degree angle, and bizarrely fall the wrong way. Your brain immediately says, nope, that ain't right. Somehow, Yord ends up behind Sol, even though he came from the other direction with an incapacitating wound to his leg. Sol tells Yord to take Osha back to the ship, even though that's a three hour walk, probably longer in the middle of the night. I will give points for Sol actually having dirt on his face. He actually looks more heroic this way, like he's been in a struggle. May decides that now would be a good time to make a run for it, and Jackie appears from nowhere with a flying kick. Shouldn't she be sticking close to her master as she's just a padawan? 
May was supposed to be surrendering to the Jedi, but now she's refusing. I suppose you could say that she's seen how much trouble they're in and doesn't want to be cuffed with the stranger out there. But she could at least try to explain her side of the story. But like most modern movies, if people just explain the situation, there wouldn't be a movie. The first time I watched the Jackie slash May fight, I thought Jackie had lost her lightsaber in the battle, but nope. It's there on her hip the entire time while May is throwing knives at her. What master hides his face from his pupil? You tell me. Is that implying that Sol is hiding something? But what? The stranger then straight up disappears. Yord says that the stranger gets into your head and stays there, to which Osha replies that her mother could do that. Which mother, Osha? Remember, you have two. Clearly they're trying to sow seeds of doubt that the stranger is Osha's mother and not Kamir. Even though Kamir is the only one close enough to have arrived after May did her 180 on serving her master. May again gets a face full of Tang in her fight with Jackie. What does it all mean? Jackie does surprisingly well against the stranger. Better than even six simultaneous Jedi. When her saber is disabled she uses a bit of quick thinking to produce Kalanaka's weapon from her belt. Then when they clinch she fires up her own saber to get even more of an advantage over the stranger. Luckily, the stranger cuts Kalnaka's saber in half, and as Jeki looks at the sputtering stump, the stranger disappears, even though he could have killed her there and then. Osha tells Yord to turn off his saber as the light attracts them. Attracts what? Yord says, as though it had been a week for him since they last saw the Umbra Moths. Even though it was more like 30 minutes ago for him. The stranger catches up with May and cuts her handcuffs, freeing her. Then he attempts to kill her. Why cut her loose if you're going to strike her down? Anyway, Sol turns up just in the nick of time, again! As does Jackie, and they have a pretty cool fight. Meanwhile, Osha leads the Mothy Boys back to the battle. Sol gets his saber fizzled out and does a pretty good job of fighting the stranger unarmed until Jackie intervenes, throwing wild elbows and dislodging Darth Maul's helmet. They clinch and Darth Maul uses a secret mini saber hidden in the hilt of his regular lightsaber to ventilate Jackie's torso. Now I'm not saying that she's going to return from these wounds, but they are in a pretty perfect triangle and could have missed the major organs, although the top one has definitely severed her spinal cord. After striking a pose it's revealed that the stranger is Kamiya. Who could have guessed? A bit of vamping from the newly revealed Kamir, and Sol admonishes him for killing a child, to which Kamir rightly replies, You brought her here. Kamir throws his cloak in Sol's face and force pulls May into a choke. And goddamn, those arms are jacked. I'm jealous. Kamir says that the Jedi might call him Sith, but that doesn't mean he is one. Who even knows what the criteria is for a Sith these days? Being an evil Jedi used to be enough. Now you have to have taken an oath or bled a crystal. It's all so flimsy. He did it. He said the name of the show. While they're crapping on, Yorg comes out of nowhere and force pulls his helmet into his hand and uses it as a cudgel and disables Kamir's saber. But Kamir still has his bracer and disables Yord's saber too. But Kamir is too quick and gets the better of Yord, snapping his arm and then his neck. It's a shame really as Yord was the only Jedi I liked. I guess Kamir will have to be my new favourite, he's really hamming it up. Sol is about to behead Kamir and Osha calls out for him to stop. Anything that Kamir does from now on is your fault Osha. There's a lot of stuff in here about Sol's dark past, but we've not really been shown any of it, so it all just falls flat. Osha attaches Pip's versatile headlight head to Kamir's back and the Umbra Moths take him away, even though he should have no trouble fighting them off. Just as Osha's about to get some answers from Sol, finally, May hits him with the stun gun. So she can force pull from 30 meters away. That won't come into play later on. May wants Osha to be a family with her again. But Osha remembers that May is a selfish cow who always looks out for herself. After a brief tussle, May Hadoukens Osha off a drop and renders her unconscious. Yeah, real family oriented behavior. 
In one of the most ridiculous scenes I've seen since Rebel Moon, May grabs Yord's lightsaber and bends over awkwardly before igniting the saber under her chin and sweeping it up in front of her face to cut her hair short like Osha's. Imagine the smell. <laughs> I love the out of tune female chorus that starts singing. Being in tune is just further patriarchal oppression. Kamir manages to free himself of the Umbra Moths. Meanwhile, Basil finds Pip's head. So May just strips her sister and swaps clothes. Now she's helping Sol. Why can't she knock him off and then the entire four Jedis will be finished? I have no idea what her plan is now. Infiltrate the Jedi Order? Aliens speaking alien language. Couldn't even be bothered to name them. They're on Kofar, just call them Kofarians. Easy. Sol, May and Basil board their ship. And even though it was a three hour walk, not once did Sol think to check May's head for a white circle. You know, because there's twins about? I hate twin plot lines. Basil's obviously suspicious of May, but Yord said he was the only one who took the course to understand their language, so I assume there'll be hilarious hijinks ensuing. Kamir makes it back to the scene of the battle. Sol didn't even collect the lightsabers, so anyone could have picked one up. And they didn't take the most valuable artifact in the universe, the lightsaber depowering helmet. And it was right there when they left. Kamir heals Osha's wounds and spouts some gibberish about how even when things are going good, we can see how bad things really are. And that's the end of episode 5 of The Acolyte. A half decent lightsaber fight let down by the introduction of miracle armor from nowhere, and surrounded by a story that still makes no sense. The power levels of the Jedi fluctuate so much in this series. Jedi Master Indara dies to the trainee Mei, while the Master Kamir gets it taken right up to him by the Padawan Jeki. Sol has lost two Padawans now, Yord and Jeki, and has also technically lost his other Padawan, Osha. He's not having a good run. I want to know why the Jedi won't alert the Council to the Sith that's killing Jedi. Or at least the Sith's apprentices. We're up to at least nine Jedi killed by this duo. Indara, Torben, Kalnaka, the come out with your hands up guy, Jedi One also known as Plo Kloon, the two Jedi that got spit roasted, Yord and Jeki. Why was Kalnaka drawing the Witch's Coven's circular markings on his living quarters? So we still need to see what the Jedi did that was so bad that Master Torben decided to Sudoku. And I would like to see how May went from being orphaned under the Bunta tree to being Kamir's trainee. How did Kamir get to their planet if it was all women? And who trained him? Did Master Torben train Kamir? I assume we'll have one flashback of Kamir coming across May alone, and maybe it will also include the bad stuff the Jedi did. It's clear that the Acolyte, the show, is attempting to make the Jedi seem like the bad guys. Either abusing their power or being so complacent that they have become inept. Also add a little bit of corruption for not reporting issues to the council. I just hope that when this show is over, that there's still a reason for anyone to like the Jedi as a concept. Or we may as well throw Star Wars in the bin. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.